31st, the 5th, 2015. Got a little bit to look at today. It's all good. It's all valuable information and valuable revelation. We don't just want information, we need revelation. And when we get a revelation, that's it. It's call off the chase. Once we get a bona fide revelation of the Christ, call off the chase. The world is no longer a temptation. The world is finished. We're not, we've lost all trust and faith in the world and the things thereof. We know, we're convinced they cannot help us. We say, as the preacher said, King Solomon, all is vanity after everything. What a way to commence and start um, a book. I mean, it's like it's finished before it started, isn't it? King Solomon writes Ecclesiastes, and the ecclesiastical sayings that God put in his heart and says, all is vanity. After all he had, after all the money and gold and rubies, and only recently, uh, Sister Brooke, she uh, got notice that a young man... Uh, that she used to be employed by and work under. He was a surgeon, a doctor, had a lovely wife, attractive wife, and plenty of money, nice house and car, or plural, most probably, cars. Top of the range, he wouldn't be driving something from the wreckers. And he had everything going for him, and he killed himself. That was on the Monday that Sister Brooke got news of that. On the Wednesday, I mentioned that um, suicide um, people, as far as I know, according to the scriptures of the Lord God Omniscient, will not enter the kingdom. And how sad it is. See, we it's the things of the world. Even a, a beautiful wife, attractive wife, beautiful cars and plenty of money, they just can't foot the bill, can they? they? They can't fill the gap. It's Jesus that does it all. Eh? And we're going to see that again today. Eh? I did mention in Wednesday's meeting about another young fellow, about 35 year old, telling me that his mother wasn't a sinner and uh, that he doesn't believe that... Um, you can have a birth with, with, unless you have two, a male and a female sperm. And He said I was a hardline Jesus freak. But after all he said, um, and they also said that Jesus was black. And this guy was, uh, he wasn't really black, he, he, he was brown. But I, I knew what he was insinuating. And so... As I calculated and considered who this young man was, I found out that uh, he was a racist whose God was his mum, who calls Jesus a liar, and the only thing he got right was that I'm a hard lie Jesus friend. Yeah? And at the same time he was drilling me on the street, the Lord blessed me with a Roman Catholic... Uh, a chappy who came along and said to me, well, actually I said to him, he's received literature off me for years. And I often wondered about this chap, whether he was for real. I don't like to judge people any other way but what comes out of their mouth. And he heard the conversation going on and he sided with the mummy's boy. He sided with the the racist, whose God was his mummy, 
he calls Jesus a liar and said I was a hard line Jesus friend and that man was a war veteran I mean he didn't show much bravery to me at the end of the day you know the brave heart the true brave heart uh, the people who stand up and call a spade a spade and not a great big shovel amen they stand up and tell it the way it is hey right? with sister Vera giving her testimony and, and I like the way it was given because there was no heat on her you know it was in conversation and she wouldn't even realize she was testifying but she was testifying and she told it the way it was and that's the way it was in our house and that's the way we were you know the the way we were memories in the corners of my uh, huh. oops <laughs> getting a bit carried away then hey okay. i thought i was back in the land of what is it enchanted ground where the devil wants us hey? in emotions where the devil wants us it, it, thinking our own way we need to be brainwashed with the word of god full stop period so every time I look at that testimony on paper and, and I've been distributing it this week I'm so proud to distribute it because um, the world go out there and blurt how they help people I know blurting it out all the time oh we built a house or extended the kitchen you know some reno mob it's all half done really we know that don't we we know <laughs> <laughs> the tradesman that's teaching my son carpentering even he said their slap up mob these renos it's all cover up it looks good you know what I mean it's sort of like it looks like a religious person you get that appearance of godliness you know but deny the power ooh all slap up and this carpenter's wife don't like him saying anything either because she likes the reno shows you know she likes to see those women with those steel cap boots, I right? You know, and the hammer in the hand, you know. Talking like the boys, you know, sort of thing. Whew, God help us. Yeah, I really like that testimony of Sister Vera. Everything changes. If you go to a church and your life is still the same as it was before you went to the church, I would get out of there. Get a taxi. Run, jog. Get out of there. Because there's no transforming power there. Bolt. Yeah? So, uh, Unseen in 2.15 is coming forward everywhere. My prophecy that the Lord gives me. You'll find out who's who in the zoo in 2.15. Well and truly. Okay. So let's move on to a little bit more um, on the prelude and the hors d'oeuvres. Channel 9 on, on 9 News now. It's a, it's a program. They had an opinion poll, like an in house thing, you know, with all the different um, news readers and casters or whatever they are. Talk back. And one woman said, "We, in relation to gay marriage or sodomites marrying, we have a right to marry whoever we want. Nearly right. And it would be a good thing if Tony Abbott, if he wants more votes and wants more popularity, Tony Abbott needs to be best man at his lesbian sister's wedding. And that would really give him favour in the Australian people, people's eyes, I reckon it would. 75% <coughs> go for sodomite marriage at the moment, and it won't be long, and it will be in, and you watch what happens then. Oh, look, the, the downhill thrust, you know, the downhill road. 
that they reckon they've got problems with Medicare now. Why well, sodomite marriage is, is legalised. Plagues will spread through this country like you wouldn't believe. I mean, Ebola will pile in the, in the side of it. Yeah, give Tony more votes. Hey? Eh? And uh, if you don't know by now, Robert Schuler, he died. And um, I'm not weeping at all. <laughs> I'm actually clapping my hands. Because there's another deceiver moved on. Robert Shirley used to run the uh, and, and and started initiated the Hour of Power, the Crystal Cathedral. Perfect name, Crystal New Age Cathedral, and got a bit shabby towards the end. It's still going, but I mean they're running short of dough, and they've had to downsize a bit. But don't know how the crystals are going. But Robert Schuller, they had him on the TV, um, like sort of with a photo reflection of, of Robert, um, with his books, you know, how, how he sells his books on TV and um, for a price, of course, full of lies. And, and a, it's a mix of the teaching... Uh, he often spoke of uh, one of his uh, besties, um, Norman Vincent Peale, who was a sworn New Ager. You know, he, he, he liked to throw a bit of um, Jesus in if necessary, you know. But, um, yeah, Robert Schuller has now moved on, and I know, well, I believe where he's moved on to. Positive thinking was the teaching of Robert Schuller. It wasn't the doctrine of Jesus. It was positive thinking, but he did come under the cloak of Jesus. You know, the, the horse call um, uh, error. Uh, error, I should say, error rides the horse called truth, doesn't he? Always. And then we have Hillsong this morning with the Grace, uh, grace House. And Brian was talking about the great grace on Hillsong, Bobby Houston's first women's conference, Bobby and her friend Holly, I don't know his friend or daughter or what, first Hillsong conference, they had 602, as they number counted, in their first con, I mean conference, and uh, I don't know how they got the 602 there, and, uh, but it might have been a promotion, uh, I could imagine, of her book, Christian Women Love Sex. But I, I really can't see how um, God's grace would be there, really, with um, peddling of the word, humongously, and pedophilia in the ranks. You know, I can't see that in the assembly of God. I've always believed it's been Ichabod a long time ago. You know, the Lord has moved on. And that's confirmed by the teaching of the assembly of God today. If you have a look at that teaching, Brian was saying this morning that grace, you know, Everything was, we're saved by grace. Once again, we're getting that stinking uh, gospel, putrid, saved by grace. I mean, anyone can accept that. But when you uh, shine the light on the next part of the verse in Ephesians 2 8, through faith, that changes everything, doesn't it? You know? It changes everything, brings us into the equation and brings us into the picture very clearly that we have to walk the walk in order to be saved. Yeah? We have to walk the walk. There's no other way. So, 
Let's go into the message today. <clears throat> this is our fourth message. Um, we went, if we go back and recall, our first message was well-being. Well-being. And then we went on from there to well-being to or um, well-wells and wellness. Uh, last week and today uh, we're on part two of wellness which is unspeakable that's our message today unspeakable we have the unspeakable and we're going to open our Bibles in, in, in the third letter of John third letter of John Keeping in mind that we're deconstructing the word well-being. And we just keep getting uh, Holy Ghost um, insight. Simple. It has to be simple. We don't want to be steered away from the simplicity of the cry. Very simple. Simple is beauty. Simple is is power. Simple is joy. Simple is unspeakable. You know, I don't like the clatter of complexity. I like simple. You know, oh, it's holiday time. Oh, hey, let's have a holiday. What are we going to do? Uh, stay home. What are you going to do? Uh, Maybe sleep in, you know, don't have breakfast, have brunch, you know, breakfast at 11.30 or something. What are you going to do then? Oh, have a bit of a talk, you know, a bit of a pillow fight or something. Um, order in something. Have a holiday. Not, not a madman's day. Loading cars up, um, taxing and maxing your credit card, being disappointed because where you went the food was just rubbish. Could have cooked better yourself. All that sort of thing. That's not a holiday. That's just a regret day, right? resentment day. Simple. Love it. Simple. It's unspeakable. Right? Let's not be steered away from the simplicity of the Christ. Third letter of John. Title of a message today, unspeakable. Wow. The elder to the beloved guys, whom I love in truth. No hypocrites here, is there? Beloved, I pray that you may prosper in all things and be in health just as your soul prospers. For I rejoiced greatly when brethren came and testified brethren came and testified of the truth wow that is in you just as you walk in the truth I have no greater joy than to hear that my children walk in truth verse 3 it's so beautiful, isn't it? I rejoice greatly. He didn't rejoice. He rejoiced greatly when he heard they had the truth. <laughs> I don't care what you got. If you don't have the truth, I'm not rejoicing about you. True ministers don't rejoice over people who have a lot of material goods. True ministers rejoice when they know that people have the truth. When I meet people that have the truth, bona fide, unadulterated, implanted and grafted, absolute, infallible, ultimatum of the word, oh, I just say, wow, here, whoo, get the coffee out. <laughs> Irish breakfast for me, please, in a pot strong, yes. Anything else? I'll let you know in a minute. <laughs> this could take a few hours. You know, I know it's going to be a hallelujah time. 
If they don't have the truth, Lord, give me patience. Now, <laughs> you know what I mean? Rejoicing that the truth. It look joy. As I said last week, we looked at we looked at the letters, well-being, and deconstructed down as far as love. That was the well. We've done with the well, W E L L. The first letter was the W for the word. If you're going to be well, it, the foundation has to be the word. You can never be well as the young man, Sister Brooke, used to work for. Intelligent, uh, um, well healed, attractive wife, attractive car, attractive home, attractive himself. You know, probably. I don't, I've never seen the man tall, dark and handsome, whatever they, they say. But all the insurance plans all up to date. Probably lots of real estate somewhere. Killed himself. Just like that. I mean, makes you wonder, doesn't it? He wasn't built on the word. Sooner or later it will crumble. If your life is not built on the word, I don't care how many houses you got, I don't care how many friends you got, it's all going to come crashing down like a deck of cards in the storm. Sooner or later. If you build your life on money, material goods, people, and you're relying on people for joy, and you're relying on people for self-esteem, and you're relying on people, sooner or later it's going to come tumbling down. And the walls came tumbling, tumbling down. We must build our lives on the rock. And I'm not talking about fast and furious rocks. I'm talking about Jesus, the rock. Hey? And then we won't be driving around singing songs on the radio, you know. Oh, we used to be. Someone dies, you know. And we can't drift with him anymore. And and we're all emotional, you know, because Billy's dead. We keep going down, wasting our money, putting our flowers there on the road. Hey, you could have bought yourself a vacant deluxe. With an egg, please. Only a small cup, that'll do. Fries, yeah, small, that'll do. One for me mate here who I don't know. It's alright. The Lord will reward me. Overflowing. Press down, shake them together. I'll get ten burgers back. <laughs> I might even get an invitation to a restaurant. Five star. Michelin. Um, yeah. I really like what it says in 3rd John. Uh, Third letter of John. Beloved, I pray that you may prosper in all things and be in health just as your soul, your soul prospers. And we all have a soul. There was, I just can't remember the woman, very famous, coming up on a television show called The Voice. Jay. Jesse Say again. Jesse J. And she said the other night publicly that uh, something about the soul, and and then she said that oh I don't have a soul. She might have been trying to describe how uh, bad she is or something I don't know and I thought wow that could that's an open door to the abyss isn't it really when you talk like that I don't have a soul she might come up it might come up again on the advertising something about a soul it might not have been Jesse J it might have been a one of those talkback women on the uh, nine yeah on the nine uh, network 
talking about gay marriage. But it came from the mouth of a woman. And it's not just the gender I'm looking at, it's that it had come from the mouth of a, a, a television personality. I don't have any soul. Wow. I, I don't have any mind. I don't have any will. And I don't have any emotion. That sounds like a zombie to me. What a thing to say. Certainly not intelligent. Right? But yet TV personality. Okay. As your soul, just as your soul prospers. Told of a message today. Unspeakable. And we're going to look at the letter B today as we deconstruct the word well-being. And the B is for bless. You know, if we're going to be well, and all's going to be well with our soul, we need to bless people. We need to bless our neighbour. We need to bless people. That's the heart of not those, just those who are well. It's a reflex action for a saint. It's a reflex action action for people who are well even people they might be on their sick bed but they still have something blessed to give someone whether in uh, word or deed and that word uh, bless. I'd like to deconstruct that. That word bless. To be. We need to be loving, effective, or loving. Be loving, exceeding. Beyond your standard service. That's an effective saint. A blessed saint and a saint who blesses. A saint that is well, even though they may be on the sick bed. We know that great men of God have died sick. Prophets in the Old Testament. Be Loving, exceeding your standard service. We know Romans 12, 1 and 2 says very clearly, our standard service, our basic service, our starting service to give our lives a living sacrifice. How can people expect to be well when they're not Givers of their time. Givers of what they have. How can we expect to be well? We're still in that self-ish realm. We're not thinking beyond self. We're not thinking beyond me. I know people that give beyond. I know people that are loving exceedingly beyond their standard service. In other words, blessed is going the extra mile. If you're going to bless someone, you're going to go the extra mile. If you're going to be a blessed person by God... You need to go the extra mile. If you're going to be heavenly happy, if you're going to be well, if all's going to be well with your soul, because when we give, we get and we give. It's not just get. That is not transformation material. 
It's not just get. It's not just grabbing. There has to be an outlet. There has to be a giving. No matter how small, no matter how large. As the Lord said, according to your heart, we give sparingly or we give bountifully. But to go the extra mile, right? to have well-being, we must bless. So many people get blessed. They become heavenly happy. Not ordinary happy. Heavenly happy. Because they move into the, by the word, blessed, heavenly happy, because they've moved into the unspeakable realm. You can't get the unspeakable from the world or in the world. That is only by God. You'll never get it in the world. I don't care how jaw-dropping the car. I don't care how awesome the house. I don't care how what anything is. It has to be granted by God, the unspeakable. Joy unspeakable. Full of glory. In awe over the simplest and smallest of things. Well-being. As I said last week, joy is associated with wellness and well-being. Joy. As we're reading here, this is uh, third letter of John, verse 2. It covers the whole spectrum. I pray, I pray that you may prosper in all things. Be in hell just as your soul prospers. This is not deteriorating. This is not perishing. This is not, oh, poor, poor, pitiful me. My mother, my own mother, rejoiced till the day she died. She's a very simple woman. But she rejoiced. She always had a smile on her face. She was a woman that was content with food and clothing. You never heard her complaining to my husband. Like to her husband, I should say. We never heard her complaining to her husband. To our dad. Always content. And give. She gave all she had. She couldn't give any more. She gave all her time. She gave all her energy. And everything that was in that little purse she had. <laughs> gave it all. She always. When everyone was partying. It was sandy season. And we've done sandy season. As ignorant. Uh good Roman Catholic sinners. We done the sandy season. We done the rabbit season. We done the Guy Fox night and all the rest of them. Guy Fox. We done all that. And she was always there cooking. She was always there serving, mopping up, lovely roast. <coughs> She's always nursing the grandchildren. She was always... We just never seen her in the party area. She was always in the background doing everyone's dirty work, but always smiling. <laughs> because the Lord touched her in the end with the unspeakable. Eh? The Lord touched her with eternal life. What a reward. This is a bit of a rich man and Lazarus thing, wasn't it? The angels escorting the beggar home. Unspeakable. We're such a blessed people. And we are the people of well-being. We are the people of wellness. We are the people of joy, unspeakable. And we're the people of the unspeakable. That I can't put words to what I have. 
But in the world, they always can tell it down to the very last detail. Their joy of their holiday, their joy of meeting distant relatives from a far land, you know? Could the Kinto someone? No. They can always tell of their, their joy. But we are the unspeakable. We have the unspeakable joy. And most of the time you better not speak it because they'll think you're a loony tune. Because they're so far away from the spiritual and so far away from the reality of truth. Third letter of John, I rejoice greatly when brethren came and testified of the truth that is in you. No mention of money, no mention of, of material progression, just the truth. Oh, hallelujah. The truth that is in you, just as you walk in the truth. Wow, what a picture. To see a man or a woman walking in the truth, a pleasure, a, a, a pleasure, I should say, a pleasure to me. A pleasure, an honour to talk to. You don't want to rush away. It's not because they're eloquent of speech. Or it's, it, it's because they open their mouth and truth comes out. And then you've got those who are anti-Christ or anti-truth. And they're just, I can't wait till I leave. I just can't get away from them quick enough. But it's reversed in the world today. Even the church people, they can't wait to get away from the person who's speaking the truth. And how contrary to the script we're reading today, are they? But yet they go to a building. On Sunday, and it's got a humongous cross on the front, big enough to do great damage to a battleship. But yet, they haven't learnt of the unspeakable because they've never picked up their cross and followed Jesus. So therefore, they're still out there in the world, longing and hungering and thirsting, for the things of the world and for people's recognition, people's acceptance, looking to have a happy, slappy time. But just leave that truth out. It's just too offensive. It just divides up too much. It's dividing soul and spirit. And it's dividing up families. Even down to the bones and the marrow gel. It's dividing. It, it, it's upsetting people. Are you hard task? Jesus freak you. My mother doesn't sin. She's never sinned. I said, look, you better go home. Mummy's waiting. Your God is waiting. Ah. And by the way, Jesus, he was blood. No, he wasn't. Jesus was spirit. Jesus is spirit and God is spirit. God ain't black and God ain't white. Right? And God ain't Jew. God is spirit. The man Jesus was Jew. <laughs> I love the Jews. Messianic. The others, the Judaic Jews that don't repent and turn to Jesus, they'll be damned just like the pedophile, just like the drunkard or the thief or the liar. They'll all be in the same spot, maybe deeper regions. Told of a message today, unspeakable. I should not be here talking today. I should not have anything to say. Because I have unspeakable joy. I shouldn't be able to, it's hard. 
for me to say something. Because I shouldn't be saying anything. Because I, it's unspeakable. I don't know where to start. <laughs> huh? The voices of a million angels could not express my gratitude. All that I am and all that I have, I give the glory to you, Jesus. To God be the glory. To God. Be the glory to God. Be the glory for the things he has done. What the Lord has done is unspeakable, unheard of on planet Earth. It's otherworldly, ushering us into the impossible, ushering us into a place where, hang on a minute, I'm still here on terra firma, but I'm living in another realm. I'm seated in heavenly places. I'm laying hold of that. I'm laying hold of, of, of being seated in heavenly places today. I'm laying hold of the unspeakable joy uh, 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 um, of well-being, um, of wellness. Uh, I'm in the Word. I'm, uh, I'm, I'm striving to enter by the narrow gate. I'm listening more than I'm talking. I'm in love. I'm in love with Jesus. I love my neighbour by telling them the truth. And I'm blessed. I'm, I'm in a place where I'm giving exceedingly beyond what's required of me. I'm going the extra mile in service to my Lord and my fellow man by revelation, by realisation, realising that we no longer live for ourselves but for him who died for us a cruel death upon the tree. The one who enlisted us as soldiers in his army that we may no longer be entangled up and all confused with the affairs and the carry-on of this hell-bound world. But we're here to please him who enlisted us in his army. And it is an army. And we do have to fight the fight. And when the, the mud hits the fan and it's crunch time, we're not to turn coward like that Roman Catholic ex-veteran who turned coward and sided with my detractor, sided with my adversary. After all those years, but he only knew my detractor for three minutes. But how quickly he changed his mind. Because my detractor was looking a little bit angry. But yet he was a soldier. <laughs> not all soldiers are heroes. And not all soldiers are soldiers. I learnt that in 2-4-R-A-R. Most of the soldiers I wouldn't go to the corner shop with when I was there. They had no backbone. Most of them were there for retirement benefit, DFRDB, Defence Force Retirement Benefit. Setting themselves, I'm here to set myself up for life. They weren't there to be soldiers. I was there to soldier. And because there was no war, I moved on. But I said to the Lieutenant, Lieutenant uh, Colonel, 
Pretty sure it was Lieutenant Colonel Rowe. As I walked out of headquarters, when the mud hits the fan, give me a ring. And he laughed. Because he knew who I was as a soldier. They used to call me Audie Murphy. Joking around. When the mud hits the fan, give me a ring, sir. <laughs> and that's the same as I am in the army of the Christ. I'm here to soldier. I'm not here to make myself wealthy financially. I'm not here to tickle your ears. I'm not here to tell you, oh, you wonderful people, you're all going to heaven. Lies. Uh, I'm here to tell you the truth. Just like that big sergeant, when I got off the bus at Kapuka, and I got off the bus and everyone was lining up, and we had our long hair and earrings in our ears and nose and knew everything, knew nothing. And this big burly sergeant, he's about 200k, walked up to me and said, what about you? Are you looking for your mother? And I was the smallest there. And I went, ah, uh, <laughs> aliens. I just looked up and I thought, oh no. And we become best of friends. Because he's seen that I had a backbone. He's seen that I could take orders. And when he said jump, I didn't ask why, I asked how high. We come the best, we, we end up the best of friends. I thought he was crying when I left. But I'm here to soldier. And I want others to get the blessing of soldiering in the army of the Lord. The unspeakable. Joy unspeakable and full of his glory. You won't get that from terra firma. You won't get that from the world. It comes from one place. It comes from the God of heaven and earth. All things seen and unseen. Hosanna in the highest of places. Whatever the, the devil's doing out there, the, my God is allowing him to, to say otherwise. Will be to say that my God can't stop him. Now that would be unfair, wouldn't it? Actually, it would be a lie. But the Lord allows all things to carry on, doesn't he? Until the day when he says, thus far and no more. It's judgment time. Everyone take their seat. And he will judge in holiness. And he will judge in righteousness. And he will judge without partiality towards gender. And he will judge without partiality towards status. And accolades and achievements and colour and race and tradition. Without partiality. We can have this beautiful, any man or woman on planet earth can have the unspeakable. Hey? A woman came up to me during the week. She said, wow, there you are again, pastor. And you're always so full of joy. Tell me about it. I said, I can't. It's unspeakable. And then the Lord gave me the message. Just like that. I didn't fast for three days. I didn't study for 10, 15 weeks. As Joyce Meyer took me three weeks of fasting to get this message. What? Hello? <laughs> like, like, like. Just one little. Wow. Now it's unspeakable. I, I really can't. I. I'm not making any apologies. I can't do that. <laughs> but I do have about 500 plus messages on my YouTube. That might give you a little bit of an indication. <laughs> I'm this joy I have. Hey? I got joy down in my heart. 
Deep, deep down in my heart. J-O-Y. Down in my heart. Deep, deep down in my heart. Jesus, give it to me. I say rejoice, rejoice. I got joy. That's what Paul was saying, wasn't he? Rejoice in the Lord always. See? He had it. He had the unspeakable. He had to have it. He had a revelation of Jesus. He had to have it. He counted everything he had, and he had a lot as a Pharisee of Pharisees. He was not on the dog. He had everything. He was not on Struggle Street as a Pharisee of Pharisees, trained by Gamaliel, hey? baptized, or should I say circumcised on the eighth day. He was just the perfect Pharisee. He had it all there. And he counted it all as dung, just so that he could know the unspeakable. So he could know Christ crucified and the power of his resurrection that he may attain to the resurrection. We need to know him. We need to have a relationship with Jesus. Not just this distant name Oh, yeah, Jesus. Yeah, I know about him. But do you know him personally? Are you walking with him and talking with him along life's narrow way? He lives. He lives. Salvation to impart. You ask me how I know he lives. He lives within my heart. Hey? Our wonderful Saviour. What a glorious Saviour. He's Jesus, my Lord. Oh, what a wonderful Saviour is He. He hideth my soul in the cleft of the rock. And I'm righteous and holy in Him. Yes, I'm righteous and holy in Him. Proverbs 17. Can we go there, please? Proverbs 17. And we're going to read a couple of verses. Uh, the proverbial saying of the wisest man that ever walked, save Christ. Proverbs 17, end of verses 21, which says in my Bible, He who begets a scoffer, oops, Proverbs 17, 21, yeah. <laughs> he, he who begets a scoffer does so to his sorrow, and the father of a fool has no joy. But a merry heart does good like medicine, and a broken spirit dries the bones. Wow. The Lord knows all things, doesn't he? We waste our time with the scoffer, eh? Right? We waste our time. Those who beget a scoffer, hey? those who have a children, those who bear children who are scoffers, he who begets a scoffer does so to his own sorrow. And the father of a fool has no joy. Wow. It pays to raise the children up in the way of the Lord. Hey? Then we have joy. I have joy over my my son and daughter. I have joy. I rejoice. I'm not in sorrow. I don't live in sorrow because of my son and daughter. Begets a scoffer, does so to his sorrow. And the father of a fool has no joy. Well, the word of the Lord, the well-being of the family doesn't rely on the doctor. It doesn't rely on money. It, the well-being of a 
of a family and a household relies on the foundation. Jesus as foundation of the house. All the rest is sorrow and pain, heartache, all kinds of things. I was a sorrow to my dad and mum. I was a pain because I never done what I was supposed to do. I was never taught to do the godly thing by my dad because he didn't know Jesus. Yeah. But the merry heart does good like medicine. Broken spirit dries the bone. How can you not be merry? How can you not rejoice when you read the word of God and strive to know what the word of God says and strive to enter by the narrow gate? When you listen to God, how can you not be merry? You know, people drink alcohol to be merry. Let's eat, drink and be merry. But we drink the true wine from the true vine. We have a merry heart. We have a, 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 a blessed heart. We are the people that go beyond what the standard service of a soldier of the Christ and saint and servant of the Lord. We go beyond what the standard service is. We go the extra mile because we're imitating Christ. Jesus always went the extra mile. Every time I've asked the Lord for something, he's gone the extra mile. All the time. When people ask me for something, I go the extra mile. When people ask, can I borrow some money off you, Paul? I say, I don't lend money. I just don't do it. I give it or I don't. Full stop. Period. And the Lord always blesses me. Because whatever they ask for, I, I, whatever it is, I give them more. And I trust in the Lord with all my heart. And I don't lean on my understanding, my old way of thinking. I lean on the everlasting arms of Jesus. Hence, the unspeakable, 25.8, unspeakable joy can burst out of my being any minute. Look out if I'm near you, because I'll start singing. I'll start rejoicing. I'll start singing, how great thou art. Robert Schuller. I mentioned this morning when they showed his photo reflection clips on the hour of powerless, I mean the hour of power, they had a Negro there singing as they showed Robert Shuler's face and past how great thou art. <laughs> oh, and I'm going, ooh, right, yes, how great thou art. Mm. How great thou art, Robert. How great thou art. How great a crook. How great a thief. How great a liar. You know? And all your new age teachings come before Jesus. You'll be damned. I'm sure. I'm sure you will. <laughs> then sings my soul. Adding to and taking away from the word equals damnation. Because in so doing, we're saying, oh, well, you don't really know what you're talking about, Jesus. I'm just going to give it a little bit of a, a move along. And I'll, I, we won't say that. We'll take that out and we'll add this. Saved by grace alone. Oh, it sounds lovely. Uh, yeah, forward slash, um, maybe add in there, Amazing Grace song. Then 
people can understand that it's just a song that saves them? A sound? A sound. And we can sing that together while we get drunk. You know what I mean? We can sing that together. Amazing grace. And we can be all inclusive, you know, as Brian Houston would say. We're just all inclusive here, you know. We're just all sinners, you know. Just sold under sin. <laughs> I mean, Jesus really didn't do that much at the cross. But, you know, as Bobby Houston would say, Christian women love sex. Holy, isn't it? It's real, you know, real holy stuff. With big holes in it, I can tell you now. Big, big, big. <laughs> Message today. Unspeakable, and it is, and I shouldn't be here saying anything. I should just stand here smiling. Because <laughs> when you're smiling, the whole world's smiling too, aren't they? When you're laughing, oh, when you're laughing. I just, you know, I must just come here and do a hour and a half with a, you know, the Holy Ghost grin sort of thing. I've been on the streets. I haven't been smiling. I've been preaching, and then people come along and they pull up in the car and they sort of just see me. But when I go like that, they seem to go, they smile with me. <laughs> must be a Holy Ghost grin. As that Aboriginal told me up in central Queensland, I'm across the road, preaching away, and I gave him a smile. He came out and said, Brother, he said, you know what, I come over here, eh? You, you get an unreal smile, eh? You go, oh, that's Holy Ghost. That's a Holy Ghost grin. Hey, really? It's pretty deadly. You know what I mean? I might get invited on to the deadly show. Well-being, all is well with my soul, because why? Because I'm doing it His way. I'm doing it the way of Yahweh. Then all, all, even the things you don't even rec rec recollect, all is well. All is well with my soul, my mind my will I, I, I don't wrestle with my will anymore will I follow Jesus or won't I no it's already determined it's already done I've already made my mind up it's what he says that's it come what may doesn't matter oh but I heard that this and, and that it doesn't mean that at all and what if there's no Jesus and Oh, look, you know, just the main thing is you love your mum. That's the main thing. And, and stick with your traditions, you know. Be faithful to your culture. That's the main thing. Really? Sorry, but I, I'm already possessed <laughs> by the paraclete. I'm already Holy Ghost possessed. I, I can't possibly think another way because uh, I was told to put on the mind of the Christ. Right? There's no room for two. It's him or you is going to row the boat. It's him or you that's going to run the show. It's him or you that's going to drive. And if you're the one driving, you'll drive yourself right smack bang into the abyss, into the fires of hell. We need him driving. He knows the way. I am the way. Unspeakable, unspeakable joy. Let's go to Habakkuk, please. Habakkuk 3. Let's see if he had the unspeakable. The prophet Habakkuk. Oh, lovely, lovely. Love me, love my dog. Hey? Sure, great to know that we have a friend. <laughs> Have a cup. Have a cup. Have a cup. Have a cup. 
We're going to chapter 3 and we're going to read, or we'll start reading in verse 17. Though the fig tree may not blossom, or the fruit be on the vines, the labour of the olive may fail, and the fields yield no food, though the flock be cut off from the fold, and there be no herd in the stall, yet I will rejoice in the Lord. Oh, there it is there. I will joy in the God of my salvation. Verse 18 says it all, doesn't it? That's the unspeakable verse. That's where it is, there. But verse 17, he talked about the whole of life. He talked about the grocery bill. He talked about the food on our table. He, he, he talked about friendship. He talked about uh, uh, um, uh, achievement. He talked about it all there. It's all there in verse 17. The fig tree may not blossom. Hey? And even though you're running a church and, and it doesn't seem to be growing, what's happening? Well, it's not about that. It's not about numbers. It's about Jesus. No fruit on the vines. What is happening? Hey? Eh? There doesn't seem to be bearing fruit. And the characteristic of the Christ. In the congregation. And the labour of the olive may have failed. And, and, and it looks like you've laboured in vain. And the field yields no food. Oh, look, the offering is down. Some of the flock are even cut off. And they don't come no more backslidden or some other reason traitors or and there's no herd no supplies even the ministers battling maybe to uphold the ministry or the fellowship or the church and it's sort of turned a little bit smirinish like the church at Smyrna, in poverty and trouble. But what did the prophet say? The prophet said, be of good cheer. He says nothing, it's not about all of that, it's about Jesus. It's about him being our everything. It's about Jesus being our olives. And our artichokes. It's about Jesus being our steak and leeks. It's about Jesus being our mushrooms and gravy. It's about Jesus being our herd and flock. And it's about Jesus being our all. Habakkuk the prophet had a revelation. <laughs> God revealed to him. All oh, that's good. But your life and existence should not be based on that. But you should be filled with joy that you can't talk about because there's nothing evident to put it to. You should be in unspeakable joy because the blessing of God is upon you. The blessing of himself. And that our rejoicing is about nothing else ultimately and preeminently than him. Jesus. That he will come again and there will be a day when we will see God in our body manifest. As Job said, 
very clearly. Let's go to Job. The writings of Job. Oh, hallelujah. Because Job, Job had a revelation too. Job chapter 19. Oh, hallelujah. Hey? You can't hold a man down. You can't hold a man back who has Jesus as preeminent. You can't do anything to him but bless him. Blessed are the true disciples of Jesus when they're persecuted because the spirit of God and glory rests upon them. Job 19 verse 25 I know that my Redeemer lives and he shall stand at last on the earth and after my skin, my body is destroyed, this I know for sure. In my flesh, I shall see God. <laughs> Woo! Whom I shall see for myself, and my eyes shall behold, and not another. How my heart yearns to see God manifested fully that I may apprehend things and see things as he sees me now. Oh, hallelujah. Unspeakable. Not just information, but revelation. Oh, information is good, but nothing can beat revelation. Right? God Almighty revealing what the information's really saying. The ability to read between the lines, to see the unseen, touch the untouchable. It's untouchable to touch God without his spirit. That's why he give us his spirit. So we could be in touch with him on a daily basis. To get a touch from the Lord is so real. To get a touch from my Lord is so real. If we draw near to him, he will draw near to us. To get a touch from the Lord is so real. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. My Jesus is coming. He's coming again. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. My Jesus is coming again. Unspeakable. We can't get it in the world. It's always when the day's finished and when the... War is over. When the war is over, got to get away. And when it's all done and dusted, they must talking about it, aren't they? Oh, we had such joy. There was dancing in the street. It doesn't matter if you're black or white. You know, there was dancing in the street. And they're kicking their heels together. And, you know? Doing the old dustman kick. <laughs> Kate Middleton, you know, Charlie Chapman kick. 
No speaking about it. But we have the unspeakable. I can't talk about it. But I can lay hands on you. And you can touch it yourself. I can introduce you to him. And you can touch it yourself. And the glory of the Lord will rise upon you. Hallelujah. Or you might be like Sister Vera. And God will open your eyes to see what no one else seen in the meeting. This bright, luminous light around the printer. But no one else seen it. As God did in the Old Testament, he, he showed multitude of angels, warring angels, but no one else seen it. And Paul on the Damascus road, who was Saul, and, and, and no one else had the, the understanding that Paul had on the Damascus road. Only him. Because God is sovereign. He's the potter. And he does what he wants, when he wants, with who he wants. And no one can change it. No one. I don't care if you go to Bible college for six billion years. You still won't have what the touched preacher has. Because once God touches a man or a woman, they're never, ever the same again. Full stop, period. And they just do what they do, you know? They just do what they do, do well, because of Jesus. Not because of them. I studied eight years in a cemetery. I'm in a seminary. I know my Redeemer lives. And I will see him manifested in me. I will take on immortality, Job said. Hallelujah. Isn't that wonderful? Hey? Eh? And what about Job again? Let's just zip over quickly, quickly to Job chapter 1. Hey? Eh? Job chapter 1. Let's have a quick look there before we close today. Unspeakable. Unspeakable. Uh, actually, I think we'll leave it there. And we'll look at that next week. Just sort of hold you there in suspense for a little while. And they just say, nah, we'll have it the next week. Unspeakable. We have the... Why do we bother about the speakable? You know, you notice in this fellowship I don't need speakers? Because I have the unspeakable. <laughs> we don't have speakers here. The Holy Ghost is my speaker. And magnifier. Hey? He's my power. He's my guide. The unseen in 215. The unspeakable. What Jesus can do for you. No other power can do. God, any river. You think are uncrossable. Have you got any mountains you can't tunnel through? My God specializes in things thought impossible. He'll do for you what no other power can do unspeakable, unbelievable, untouchable, undoable, and just 
I don't have any other words because it's unspeakable. That's our message today and everyone agreed with the preacher and said? Amen. And anyone else that didn't just whinged. Thank you Lord.